take. Teixeira is 30. He's the champ. The challenger, Castaño, is 31. Look at the height differential. Teixeira, almost four full inches taller, and the reach is almost 10 inches. Ladies and now here we go, ladies and gentlemen, from Fantasy Springs Resort Casino, Indio, California, our co-feature bout of the evening. 12 rounds scheduled for the WBO Junior Middleweight Championship of the World. First, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black and silver. He weighed in 153 and three quarter pounds. In 17 professional fights, he is unbeaten with 16 victories, including 12 knockouts, no defeats, and one draw. Hailing from and fighting out of Buenos Aires, Argentina, here is the WBO number one ranked contender in the world, Castaño. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the red corner, wearing blue with yellow. He weighed in 153 and one half pounds. In 32 professional fights, his record outstanding with 31 victories, just one defeat. 22 big wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the reigning, defending WBO Junior Middleweight Champion of the World from Sombrio Santa Catarina, Brazil, presenting Patrick Deschamps. Right here, right here, right here, please. Look at me. Right here, right here. Right here please. You know me. You know me. Okay, mouthpiece. Mouthpiece. Okay. Both trunks, poquito arriba, a little bit high. Abajo aquí no bueno. Aquí bueno. Okay. Prestame atención. Protégete en todo momento. Play duro, play limpio. Buena suerte. Toco lo más. You know, the Brazil-Argentina rivalry is largely centered in soccer, but boxing, it's had its moments. In 2003, Popo Fritas and Jorge Barrios, they fought an absolute war for the super featherweight title. If this fight is half as good, we're all going home happy. Well, Castaño's reach is almost half of that is Teixeira. Can the bigger, longer Teixeira impose his will from the outside, or can Castaño get inside and beat the Brazilian down? 12 rounds, ladies and gentlemen for the Super Welterweight Championship of the World. That's exactly what Castaño does. He tries to make opponents uncomfortable with aggression and pressure and, and really fast feet. He's a very athletic fighter. And he's also powerful in there. And back to the rivalry. We asked to share about it. He said, listen, any win is good, any, any victory. But if you beat an Argentinian, it gives you the extra special taste. You were usually the taller, longer guy, Sergio. You've had someone who's much shorter than you. How did you keep them at range? You know, I wasn't much of a jab, jabber, so it wasn't with the jab, it was just with defense. You know, I, I had good head movement, but with Teixeira, he doesn't have that head movement or he's not as fast with his feet. He needs to use that eight inch reach advantage, or nine inch reach advantage, just like he's doing right there. Not just aim for the head either, aim for the chest and the belly and the torso. That's exactly what he needs to do to keep uh, Castaño off. You know, the wild card in this fight is the long layoff. Both these guys have had layoffs of over a year. How that will affect either one of them, if at all, is an open question. The only time you see, I wouldn't say the only time, but mostly the only times you see someone with a nine inch reach advantage, it's at the heavyweight division, much less the junior middleweight division. Let's see how Castaño handles it. So you can see that Castaño knows how to fight small. You know, he, uh, he lures the taller, taller opponents with dipping his head down and coming over the top. You know, some bigger guys uh, fight smaller. For instance, a uh, man sitting in this ring, in this arena who we've heard of many times, Oscar De La Hoya, when he fought Manny Pacquiao, he was much taller and longer, but he, he almost crouched down a little bit, and they looked almost the same size when they fought. See, Castaño knows how to... He's jumping in with... He's being explosive. He's jumping in, but he's doing it real athletically. He's, he's leaving his feet. Normally, you don't want to leave your feet when you're uh, jumping up like that, but he has no choice with the taller Teixeira. 
And another misconception is that a shorter man can't out jab a taller fighter. I mean, it's hard to do, but it's definitely possible. It just takes timing and, and footwork to, to inch your way in with your back foot. Stop, 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 stop. Step out of here. Paul Williams, as we know, right around six foot one. Right now, Sebastian Fundora is six foot seven. It's a monstrous super middle. How much longer do you think he can stay in that division? I'm shocked he's there now. He, I mean, he looks thin, but he doesn't look like he's malnourished. He looks in fantastic shape. He just looks like a tall, strong kid, and he's such a force. Coming off a big win, too. He's a, a very interesting prospect. Castaño's already enforcing his pressure, and, and it's forcing Teixeira to have to fight back and open up. And this is what Castaño does so well. He, he puts on pressure and forces his opponents to open up and attack which benefits the shorter, stockier, explosive fighter. Correct me if I'm wrong, Sergio, but it seems like any time Teixeira tries to throw a body punch, he leaves that chin high and dry. No, that's the problem with being that tall. You know, uh, when you have that long of a reach advantage and you're that tall, it kind of looks awkward, and you're not as athletic. So everyone thinks that the taller fighter has the, the natural advantage. That's not the case. It's all about your footwork. One thing to watch, too, you know, Teixeira has had, what you said, over a year since his last fight. But sitting with him in the fighter meetings, you can still see the scar tissues from those cuts that he had against Adam, especially under that right eye. You can see visibly signs of that cut. So it could be something that could open up at some point in this fight. See, if you look at their footwork, Castaño has lighter feet. He's, he's getting on angles right there. He's switching southpaw back to orthodox. This is going to be a, a, a fight with where they're battling for foot position because it's southpaw and, and orthodox, but not only that, it's the fact that Teixeira doesn't have the foot speed to keep up with the speed of Castaño. We've already seen one big upset today, even more of a difference in odds than this one. Maurizio Lara with Josh Warrington over in England today. Did anybody see that coming, Chris Mann? No, that was right out of nowhere, basically. Lara, at one point, was a 12 to 1 underdog, and he came out and just physically dominated Josh Warrington. Didn't just stop him, put him on his back and put him out. What a huge win for Lara, and tough setback for Josh Warrington, who was hoping to make some noise at either 126 or 130. And if you haven't seen that, make sure you watch it on demand here on the zone. You can watch all of Matchroom's fights, fight cards from the UK here on DAZN. Right now, Castaño starting to land his punch. Nice left there from Teixeira. You know, being undersized is just familiar territory for Castaño. We were on a Zoom last night, and I asked him, like, have you ever fought anybody shorter than you? It took about 30 seconds. We thought of one guy. Everybody else has been taller. It probably happened when he was eight years old, too. I wonder how proud his family and his fellow countrymen are with him right now and how much prouder they would be if he could beat Teixeira tonight and become the WBO junior middleweight champion. Not only that, but I, th I believe his uh, father was a boxer, a professional fighter as well, and one of his brothers. He comes from a fighting family. Starting to get inside now, being much more aggressive is the Argentinian. Are we going with Argentinian, Chris, or the Argentine? Dealer's choice. Dealer. See, Teixeira needs to move his head. If, if he's going to stand up like that, he's bound to get caught with something overhand and fast by Castaño. He's too explosive. See, that's something that we're, we're not used to seeing from Teixeira is, is dip shots like that going under, making himself smaller. That's what he's going to have to do with the smaller fighter, the lot smaller fighter in, in, in uh, Castaño. You know, Teixeira sort of evolved as a fighter over the years. Back in 2015, he fought Don Mouton, and he averaged 130 punches per round in that fight. Since the Stevens fight, it's been a lot more selective, still throwing a high number of punches, but not at the same level he was before, but against Castaño, to keep up with this pace, you've got to be more active than he has been through the first two rounds. I knew Castaño was a real deal when, when he went the distance and he, and he uh, got a draw with 
and he's landing Lara, another southpaw, a slick sniping southpaw. But then I saw a fight where he, he actually beat um, Sergey Dervinchenko in the World Series of Boxing as well. So Dominic is a real deal. He has that, that, that background and that pedigree, that resume. Castaño in the amateur ranks has a win over Errol Spence Jr. as well. So very well-regarded amateur fighter now fighting in the pros. The over-under on this fight, about 10 and a half rounds, was basically a pick -em. From what you've seen so far, do you think this goes the distance, Sergio? No, it doesn't look it doesn't look good for Teixeira right now. It looks like he's struggling with the pressure of Castaño. This is what Castaño does. He breaks down opponents with strength and pressure and explosiveness, punching from all angles. Okay, we're, we're gonna have to get to the seventh round before I wave the white flag on Patrick Teixeira. If you only watched the first six rounds of that fight against Adamas, he was getting dominated, his face was a bloody mess. He dug down and knocked Adamas down in that fight in the seventh, and that changed the course of the fight. He may have to do the exact same thing, land the kind of punch that puts Castaño down to change the course of this one. And hey, listen, that's a great point, Chris, and I'm not, I'm not putting it past Teixeira, because this is exactly, you're right, how he looked against Adamas. In that first half of the fight, and he turned it on in the second half. We've seen fighters over the years that have to get hurt, really, before they light up. Evander Holyfield was world famous for that. Just when he thought he was done, he was just getting started. Nice right hand there for Teixeira. But Castaño certainly applying all the pressure here in round three. Coming right back after that shot. So here we go into round four. It seems to be getting more entertaining round by round. Who knows what it's going to look like by round 10 if we get that far. Castaño's not going to relent with his aggression. This is his style of fighting. So Teixeira's going to have to do something else. And this is what he did with Adamez. You know, Teixeira had to fight him in the inside and land body shots and uppercuts, fight the smaller man's fight in order to get respect. He might have to do the exact same thing with Castaño tonight. I want to thank the California Commission for all they've done this week, along with Golden Boy Promotions, and of course, everyone here at DAZN during this pandemic to pull this event off. The body shot by Teixeira, the one before that straight low, but I love the fact that Castaño didn't even blink, didn't say nothing. That's a fighter for you. Yeah, Castaño's just getting warmed up. Chris, how do you have it scored through three full rounds? I've got three rounds to none in favor of Castaño. The end of that third round, I thought to share land his best punch, that strong right hand. But so far, all Castaño is dictating the pace, landing the cleaner shots. To share needs to do something to change things up. First round felt pretty close, but the last two seemingly all for the Argentine. <laughs> I like what Tashura's attempting to do right here. He's trying to he's trying to land the body shot from a smaller opponent right there. And that's see that right there. That's a good body shot by Tashura. He's getting hit with three or four shots upstairs, but it's worth it by investing with to the body down there. Because then it sets up that uppercut. Good left hand connecting to Castaño. Now, Sergio, Castaño's been active, throwing punches in a lot of different ways, but it just looks to me like he's trying to set up that left hook. He's throwing that overhand right, he's going to the body. I just feel like he's trying to set up that left hook. Castaño's trying to, just trying to land punches right now. He's just trying to, he's trying to be relentless, which is his style of fighting. He puts so much pressure that he makes his opponents not want to punch. Teixeira's going to have to do something to keep this, this, this fire plug off him. <laughs> Any concern from you, Sergio, that Castaño is maybe doing too much too soon and that, like in his last fight, Teixeira could close much stronger? No, I don't think that's the case here. I, I believe this is his style of fighting. He's athletic, he's aggressive, and this is just the way he fights. <laughs> Round 5, scheduled for 12. If you're just joining us, Brian Castaño undefeated. He is the challenger, the champ, Patrick Teixeira, and the blue and gold trunks. He is the reigning WBO junior middleweight champion fighting out of Brazil. Still to come tonight, of course, our main event, Jojo Diaz 
and rock him up. You know, we know the WBO title is on the line in this fight, but the spoils that come with it is also on the line. So Jamel Charlo's out there angling for 154-pound unification fight. And of course, Terrence Crawford is looking for a big fight. He's a candidate to face Patrick Sheriff if he wins. <laughs> I'm really impressed with this guy so far. You know, he, is, he is just everything we've seen in some of his bigger fights. I thought he won the Arslanian Army fight. We're seeing a lot of that type of pressure, those types Ooh, of attacks. Good left uppercut for Teixeira. Teixeira landed two uppercuts on the inside. He's going to have to fight Castaño on the inside just like he did with Adamas. I'm telling you, this is not enough. The, the length, the size, the advantage of, of being so tall is not going to be enough for Teixeira. He's going to have to dig down deep and get the respect of Castaño on the inside. Good attempt right there with the left hand by Teixeira. See that shot right there, that body shot right there. I like that body shot. I want to see more body shots from Teixeira. And then turn those into uppercuts. Good counter right there. Stadia. It's the kind of range Castagna wants to be in. Just smooth punching by Castagna, backing up, uppercuts, left hooks, right hooks. And this is what I meant when, when I, 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 I'm talking about him being so athletic and agile. He has the better feet between the two. And when it comes to get two guys with power, whoever's going to set up that power with position is going to have the advantage. And right now, the advantage is all on Castaño. And that's what Joel Diaz was saying that Heeldrum's going to have to do against Canelo. You can't let him get comfortable. You got to get him out of his rhythm and make him think, not let him get into his groove. I feel like I've heard every trainer or fighter say some variation of that when it comes to Canelo. What else can they say? What, what, then you tell us, what's what's the key to beating Canelo? Chris Mannix. B. Floyd Mayweather. Well, he's still out there. Good shot. Tied to Shura, but right back up. Tied to Castagno. This is really... They go right back at it. Castagno on the front foot to Shura on the back. Teixeira fighting really relaxed, but uh, he's pulling out his head when he's done punching him. He better be careful with that. Castaño's too explosive. Remarkably, Castaño has amateur victories over Errol Spence Jr. and Sergei Derbyanchenko. So this guy is for real. And that's why the Las Vegas bookies put him at about an 8-1 to one favorite, despite being the challenger. Anytime a fighter has almost 200 amateur fights, you know he's fought some of the best around the world. He was one of six siblings growing up in Argentina. His father was a boxer. His younger brother, Alan, became a pro fighter as well. But his career almost ended six years ago when Castaño collapsed during a morning run with dehydration and organ failure. What a scary moment for him and his family. But thankfully, he bounced back, and here he is in the biggest fight of his life. You know, talking to Castaño last night, he showed a lot of respect for Teixeira and the job he did in the Adamas fight, but he was kind of perplexed by Adamas' performance. Just Ooh, right hand there for Castaño. He just didn't know how or why Adamas let Teixeira off the hook and basically told me that he has no intention of allowing something like that to happen. Teixeira looking for that right hook. Started in the middle of the round, trying to land that right hook, but Castaño's just too much for that. He's going to have to set up that right hook behind jabs and body shots. Just over a minute to go here in round six. It's been mostly the Argentinian as he's beaten up his Brazilian counterpart. Castaño doing a great job cutting off the ring. Yeah, Teixeira looks like he has a leash on the rope and just keeps circling around the ring, stuck to the ropes. And that's how you know 
uh, fighters doing a great job cutting off the ring, smothering and suffocating the attack of the taller fighter. And right here, look, this is all Castaño coming forward. He's not doing anything special. He's not loading up on shots. It's his feet that are carrying him. As I'm scoring this fight, guys, it, it feels somewhat similar to what we saw in the last fight with Ronnie Rios and Oscar Negrete, where Negrete was throwing and landing some shots, but the more impactful punches are clearly being landed by Brian Castaño. Castaño's always in position to punch really hard because he has a solid foundation. He always, he's gliding on his feet and not falling off balance. Everything's crisp. And we have reached the midway point of this world title fight. A good right hand just before the bell by Castaño. And this is what I mean by Tashira picking up his head and being a target right there to the shorter fighter in Castaño. Tashira's corner during that round pleading with their fighter, get off the ropes, get this fight in the middle of the ring. Easier said than done. Oh, based on the last fight against Adamas, Tashira has Castaño right where he wants him. <laughs> Downstairs and a counter punch, a good one from Teixeira, but they just don't have the same sting as Castaños do. Castaño didn't even flinch. That was a good left hand there by Teixeira, but Castaño's relentless, not staying on him. And that's his style. He suffocates opponents with pressure. Now Sergio, one thing I like about Castaño is that he's anticipating Teixeira's movements. When Teixeira starts to move to his right, Castaño throws that left but he's throwing it in the space. Teixeira is not quite there yet. Like he's sort of just anticipating him being in that spot and landing big shots. That's what you got to do. When you got to anticipate uh, uh, where your opponent's head's going to be, and that's exactly what Castaño's doing. And he's doing it by cutting off the ring and being being nifty with his feet, being swift. He's always in position to punch. That's how agile he is. And I give Teixeira credit for being game in this fight, but I have not been able to find a sound to give him at this point. 60-54 in favor of Brian Castagna, who is landing the far heavier shots. And you mentioned the names Terrence Crawford against Teixeira, or, or Charlo against Teixeira. They're probably looking at Castagna right now, probably not being quite as comfortable taking this guy on, considering what he's doing. Oh, I think Jermel Charlo will get him tomorrow. I think Jermel wants all that smoke. <laughs> Castaño just picking up his hands now because he's, he's lost respect for Teixeira's punches. He's just coming forward now, not minding the punches coming back. It feels like he's broken down Teixeira. Yeah, Teixeira's got to get more active and more accurate with these shots. The knockdown of Adamas in the seventh round of that last fight, that wasn't really a one-punch knockdown. That was an accumulation of hooks to the head that eventually put Adamas down. We haven't seen that type of accumulation at this point when it comes to Castaño. Castaño hasn't given him opportunity. He won't let him breathe. I mean, he's closing in the space. Anytime Teixeira, you know, gets some distance behind that long reach, you see Castaño break the distance with his feet coming in and, and getting the combinations flowing. No, look, at, look at how he's blocking the shots and coming right back with short shots because Castaño is. Can you translate to Teixeira's corner next round? No, sir, but that's uh, Rogelio Romo in Teixeira's corner and giving him excellent advice. He just needs to show some, some uh, enthusiasm, some energy, some strength. You know, the body language is all Castaño right now. <laughs> Castaño switches from orthodox to, to southpaw, and you don't even notice. That's how athletic he is. He does it simply with his feet. The foundation switches from lefty to righty, but upstairs, the same punches are coming around. It's really hard to defend against that. If Teixeira's going to pull off a similar performance to his last fight against Carlos Adamas, he's got to turn it around and quick. Pretty much a shutout so far. 
To Cheryl backing up Castaño now, but Castaño catching and countering nicely. Anytime to Cheryl lands something, Castaño comes right back with a counter shot. Catch and shoot. And if you didn't see Beto Duran's report earlier, that is indeed Diego Maradona's likeness on the back of the trunks of the Argentinian Brian Castaño, a tribute to the fallen soccer legend. I like to share going to the body in this round. Uh, not really hurting Castaño so much, but he's been very good at aiming downstairs. No, and he's following his corner's instructions finally. He's going forward, aiming for the body, attacking, getting a little bit more aggressive. That's what he did. That's what he's going to have to do if he's going to have to uh, win this fight or get respect out of Castaño. Well, he's got the confidence in the back of his mind. Listen, I've done it before. I can do it again. I can change the momentum of a fight that I'm losing. I think it's a good idea for Sheriff to try to initiate the action. Push Castaño back a little bit because for six rounds, just being chased around the ring by Castaño just wasn't working. Teixeira with 22 KOs in his 31 wins, and that ratio looks pretty impressive, but many of those knockouts came earlier in his career against modest opposition in his home country of Brazil. Yeah, he hasn't had a knockout since the loss to Curtis Stevens. And he admitted to us this week he changed his style after that fight. He wasn't focused on going for knockouts, just trying to be more accurate with his punches. Well, he might have to start going for knockouts here soon. He's indeed, according to Chris's scorecard, lost seven straight rounds. Good body shot. Castaño really starting to land with thunder to the body. He's got a lot of real estate to work. Nice counter right hand by Teixeira, just when he think he... Chris, that seemed like a closer round for Teixeira. We'll see your scorecard in a few minutes, see if you actually gave that to him. But he is showing signs of life, for sure. Well, he's changed the game plan up, clearly. He's trying to be more aggressive, push Castaño back. Castaño, though, is a very good counter puncher as well, so you're not going to fool him with the strategy. I thought that was Teixeira's best round, but I still I still think Castaño uh, landed the, the cleaner shots. He was more active. Teixeira certainly looks much more comfortable when he's the man on the outside and dictating the tempo. Teixeira fighting with more confidence now, coming forward. A little bit more looser now as well. That's what I want to see from, from Teixeira. No, don't fight so stiff. Don't fight so tall. Just let your hands go, go forward. Indeed, Chris Mannix did give that last round to the Brazilian. So signs of life with four rounds left. See, that's what made... A fighter like Paul Williams so successful. He threw, he threw 100 punches around, but he fought so relaxed. So even when he landed a big shot, he was so relaxed that he took that shot. Teixeira is fighting really well in this round. And the last round, he's fighting relaxed, coming forward now. He's not as tense. We have learned one thing about Tashira. He is a tough customer. He showed that against Adamas, and he's doing it again here tonight. Continuously eating body punches, head shots. Fifty-eight of fifty-eight percent of this fight has been fought at close range. Of course, that favors Brian Castaño. Yeah, Teixeira came in saying he wanted to keep this fight at a distance, use that nine-inch reach advantage to his advantage, but that didn't work. In the first half of the fight, Castaño kept chasing him, close, cutting the ring off, forcing him into uncomfortable situations. This is a complete shift in the game plan in these last couple of rounds. But here comes Castaño, just countering, brilliant. Castaño really is a sweet boxer puncher to watch because he has the power to, to knock you out, but he also has the speed and the agility to stay on his toes and just pop shot you from the outside, the inside. 
How would he do against Charlo, Chris, from what you've seen so far? How much of a chance would you give him to win that fight? I think it would be an excellent fight. I think Jamel Charlo has established himself as the top guy in the 154-pound division, not just because of those three titles, but because he's fought the best competition. But Castaño is the real deal. It'd be a great fight. We asked Castaño his thoughts on what would happen tonight. He said, well, listen, Teixeira moves well and he's strong. He boxes well from the intermediate range and long distances, but I'm a strong guy, and my pressure and combinations will make the difference. Sounds about right. Sounds about right, and they know each other. They sparred before in Las Vegas, and that's where Castaño noticed that, you know, Teixeira can be beat because it's timing, you know, so this is, this is a very confident fighter in Brian Castaño. Looks like the back of Tashara's left ear is bleeding. Power punches through round nine. Castaño really taking over. 218 to 116. Impressive stuff by the challenger. That's what Castaño does, though. I mean, not much of a jab. Most of his shots are of the power variety that he's throwing and landing at a high rate. He is locked in. So you can see the difference in absorbing the punches right there. Teixeira unleashed and Castaño just didn't even flinch. Castaño came right back with the same amount of punches and you can see how Teixeira didn't handle them as, as easily as Castaño did. See that right hand, right, the right hand to the body just bent down, bent Teixeira in half right there. Stands up again and comes back. Teixeira, as tough as you'd like. How much longer can he take this punishment? Castaño not forgetting about the body. He landed a big overhand right, landed right on the money with Teixeira, not forgetting about the body again. Look, I think Teixeira can take this punishment for a while. He's only been stopped by Curtis Stevens on one punch, and Stevens is and was one of the biggest punchers in the 160 pound division. So Teixeira can hang in there, but if you're his corner, at some point maybe you're wondering, how many more punches can this guy take? Castaño's probably wondering the same thing. Uh, you don't stop the fight whenever you hold the belt like that. So the corner's gonna let it go as long as possible. Arts, but he couldn't find a gym near his house. All they had was a boxing gym, so he said, well, I guess I'll try this. And he never left. Believe it or not, Bruce Lee uh, emulated Muhammad Ali in his footwork, and he admired Muhammad Ali. So there's a there's a mutual respect between martial artists and boxers. This doesn't quite look like Bruce Lee versus Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Shades of that matchup, right? Was that Enter the Dragon? Uh, I believe it was, yeah. That jab still works, though, for Teixeira. No head movement by Teixeira, just back straight up as well, so it makes it easier for Castaño to keep punching. See, anytime you have, you're going to have a target to land like this, even though Castaño's not landing anything cleanly, you're, you're punching something that's giving you confidence and it keeps you from falling off balance and continues to throw left and right. It's just a bad look if you're Teixeira, but confidence boost for Castaño coming forward, nonstop punching. Good left hook to the right to the temple by Castaño. And now the question seems to be not can Teixeira win, but can Castaño stop him? He would love to put an exclamation point on proceedings here to send a message to the rest of this division. 
Well, considering Teixeira's only been knocked out by a big punch in Stevens, it goes to show you, you know, how big of a, a left hook Curtis Stevens had because he, actually that right overhand right that he had, the power that Curtis Stevens had from that short stature. Stanley not giving no time to breathe, no time to escape. Stays on him, cutting off the ring. I mean, that's just mentally draining if you're Teixeira. He is just in excellent shape, excellent technically, throwing big shots. I mean, he is the real deal at 154. I can see Castaño hurting or maybe even dropping Teixeira to the body right now. He's getting some really clean body shots. If Castaño can double up on one side of the body of Teixeira, I think he can, he can earn something big. Right As Gene Hackman said in the movie Hoosiers, stick to him like bubble gum. By the end of the game, I want to know what flavor he is. That's how much Castaño is chasing Teixeira around the ring tonight. Right the encounter there for Castaño as we wind down the end of the 11th round. Chin. Well, they, they can't surrender. There's three minutes left. He is the world champion. They're probably just trying to motivate him to get the best out of him, to try and pull off the miracle here in Indio. Castaño, the challenger, has indeed looked like an 8-1 to one favorite here tonight. Teixeira just cannot escape the pressure. Teixeira has switched it up in the last three, four rounds. He's gotten more aggressive. He's, he's attempted to, to, to do something else and, and, and change his strategy. He's just in there with someone that's relentless, not letting him breathe, way too agile on his feet, and, and it's just impressive on Castaño's part. Let's take a look at the power punches thrown and landed. And I have a feeling this is going to tilt heavily in the favor of Castaño as we reach the two-minute warning in round 12. Oh, yeah, over double the landed power punches. 815 thrown, 289 landed. Yeah, Tejero landed a good left hook there to back Castaño up, but he's going to throw more of them over these final two minutes to have any chance of making an impact. I'm sure Sergio Martinez is watching somewhere right now, very proud of his fellow countrymen. He is not letting up. Good uppercut. That was a vicious body shot. Oh, and that's a 10. Really caught Teixeira clean as he backed up against the ropes. A minute 15, Teixeira still can't escape the pressure. That's the, the, left hook, the left hook I was talking about early in the fight. He's been looking for that throughout the course of this. And now Teixeira. Oh, Teixeira turning around in his back. Castaño's corner urging him on. They want the finish. If Castaño lets his hands go, he'll get the stoppage. Jack Reese taking a close look, but he knows he's experienced enough not to stop this fight unless it's absolutely necessary. Teixeira continues to turn his back, but there is nowhere to go. He cannot escape Castaño's pressure. It was the body shot, Todd. I'm telling you, the body shot that really hurt Teixeira, and that's what started the overhand right to the left from Castaño. Bar Castaño go right back down with that left hand to the body. Just like that, double it up. But again, Teixeira showing you how much heart he has got, refusing to cave. No doubt about it, Teixeira's tough as a maker, tough as nails, but right now, Castaño just polarizing Teixeira. 10 seconds left. We are about to crown a new king, a new WBO junior middleweight champion, and his name is oh, Brian shit. Beautiful, Castaño. Beautiful, guys. Way to go. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards, and here are the totals. Dr. Lou Moret has it 120-108. Robert Hoyle, 119-109. And Zach Young, 117-111. All for your winner by unanimous decision. And new WBO Junior Middleweight Champion of the World, Brian.